I did a very long video on uh, your cover band and being in one and certain things about booking your band and set lists and everything. Something I forgot to mention when you're booking your band is uh, make sure you're booking yourself to a club that'll take the type of music you're playing. Like if you go to a club and you play all classic rock covers, it's probably not a good idea to go to a club uh, where they play all country music. So uh, you, you don't want to do that. And uh, I remember back in the early 90s, I ended up hanging out with some guys that put a show together. And they were like, you want to come down and play guitar, uh, a few songs with us when we do this show? And I was like, yeah, sure. And I ended up doing sound that night. And uh, a lot of my friends that I'm still friendly with here on Facebook and, uh, and, and beyond there is, they were there, like Sean Verge, um, Ian Roster, Henry Baggs was there, and uh, Dale Skinner. And we played this uh, bar in Islington, and it was a country place, and everybody played. And it was just, it was really horrific. Nobody, nobody cared. <laughs> and I remember uh, Sean and Dale were playing in a band called uh, Racing Pig Cargo. They just released a record, and uh, it was really funny. They get up and they, they do their first song, and it was a song off the record because they were doing a little bit of both. They were doing some originals and some covers, and. Uh, they do the first song off the record, and the song ends, the place is quiet, and a woman comes up and says, uh, hey, do you guys know any uh, country and western? And it's just the whole night went from there, and it was terrible. So just uh, keep that in check. you got to make sure you're the right band for the right venue, and vice versa. So, Because venues can be just as, as bad as, as bands sometimes. So uh, anyway, moving forward, I'm going to talk today uh, at you again, and I'm going to talk about... Um, Knowing your role when you play in a cover band. And that's the thing about being a musician. Sometimes everybody wants to be the boss and everybody wants to be out front and everybody wants the attention. And unfortunately, that doesn't always happen. So, uh, you know, you, you got to know your role. You got to know what you're doing in the band, what your place is. If you're a singer and you're a good singer, and uh, in our case, a good singer who's also nice to look at, you're going to get a lot of attention. The rest of the band, you're just fluff. That's it. You're, you're there for whatever reason. Nobody notices and nobody cares what you're doing. Um, nobody is going to come up to you and go, wow, you nailed that solo, or man, your bass parts were wicked, or like, man, your drumming was just off the hook. You, you get that from other musicians once in a while, and, and that's great. But, um, so you got to be content when you're in, in sort of the rhythm section or in the, in the background at that that's your thing you're the guitar player and uh, you, you you gotta know your role can't stress that one enough either um, if you're 
playing in a band and you want it to work and you want to be successful, you know what you're supposed to do every time you play. You don't step on your other musicians' toes, ever. Um, you know, you don't overplay because as great as it is, and I love it, I love I love when a guitar player goes up and just rips it out and goes for it and puts all kinds of cheese on top of something that shouldn't have it there, you know, because it's, it's fun for me. Uh, it might not be for someone who's trying to dance or enjoy the night or just, you know, like the whole Huey Lewis thing in uh, Back to the Future, you're just too darn loud. That never mattered to me. Uh, I'd rather see a guitar player do that, but that's, once again, my preference because I'm a guitar player, or try to be one. Um, so don't step on anybody's toes. If there's no solo in a song, don't put a solo in the song. If you're singing, don't sing over a solo. If you're the drummer, don't add 497 riffs to a song that doesn't have 497 different drum parts to begin with. If you're the bass player, um, just take the blame for everybody else's mistakes when 99% of the time you're probably the most solid musician in the band. Uh, but you just don't get any recognition, and that's, that's just the way it goes. And one of the things, I, I really, like I said, I can't stress about the overplaying and not doing it. I really like it a lot when, uh, I, there's nothing better for me when I'm ripping out of a solo. I like to end it with a bit of feedback and let the feedback just sort of fade out under the groove. And uh, not on top, but just lay low under and just have the bass and the drums going for a little, little while, like for a bar, for like a verse. And just hearing Alex and Perry, for example, in my band, I shouldn't say my band, the band that I play in, um, just keep it nice and keep it tight and have a nice groove. And people don't realize it's, it's your bass player and your drummer that uh, get the people moving in most cases. So if you know your role and you don't do that, you don't play a song that doesn't have guitar in it and add dun 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 dun, dun you know, over something where it shouldn't go, don't do it. Just sit in the background and be happy that you're there. And everybody will thank you for it in the end. And when you don't step on people's toes, I think uh, your relationship with your bandmates lasts longer. And I, I got an example, I was in a band with uh, some guys one time, it was a trio, and it was more for fun than anything, and we, we weren't a trio at first, I'll, I'll get to that after, and uh, we had a guitar player with us who, uh, he had this 50 watt Marshall half stack, JCM 800, and it was really loud, he used to crank the thing, and you couldn't hear anything else, so he was that full of himself that we were rehearsing one day, and I had a Fender Pro 185, solid state amp, but it was a great amp, I gotta say. And I had that thing cranked, and it was, you couldn't hear me, you couldn't hear the bass player, and the drums were just bleeding, it was hurting the ears. We were doing poison, talk dirty to me. This is back when we all had mullets. And as he's playing his solo, uh, he cranks it up even louder. So he's stepping on everybody's toes. And he was that full of himself, I went over and I turned his amp all the way down and flicked it on standby when he wasn't paying attention to me. I'd stopped playing and he didn't even notice. And he didn't notice until the end of the song. He was over, why is my amp on standby? And we all cracked up laughing and then he did the classic, ripped his cord out of the amp and left. But let everybody have their space and that keeps everything really nice and flowing throughout the night. Let the singer sing, let the bass player do what he's doing or she's doing, let the drummer go. Everybody deserves like a moment to kind of shine and when you when you do that it makes for a, a more fun and interesting night. You know, we're all pushed with the old adage less is more and I don't think I've ever really believed that. I, I think less is less, more is more and it just takes less sometimes to make something bigger. So keep all that in mind when you're uh, when you're playing, you know, and you're new at it. Anybody who's been at this a while is going to watch and go, sure, I already knew that. But for anybody just starting out, that's just a piece of advice. Doesn't matter how great of a guitar player, great of a drummer, great of whatever you are. Um, use your chops when you need to use them. But when you're out earning money in a club and you're entertaining people, that's what you're there for. You're not there for yourself. Um, 
you're there for your own enjoyment and love of music, but when you're getting paid, you're also there for the club owner, you're there for the bar staff, you're there for the people that are dancing, and your bandmates. It's not just you, it's not one person. There's a big picture, and everybody deserves their own little space in the picture. So that's about it for me today. Um, I'll probably be back next week with something else. Anyway, cheers, guys. Enjoy your weekend.